Jassa joins us now. Sudi, I want your reaction to what the Pope is saying. What do you think of the, What do you make of that? Well, well, actually, you know, God bless him for his interfaith uh, benevolence. But mm. I have to tell you that if he really wants to help the allies of the Catholic Church and the, the Catholicism that has made it to the 21st century, uh, this moral equivalency is going to kill us. It's, it's, it's very dangerous because, I mean, listen, he actually gave a nod to the military operations against ISIS because he saw the videos of Christians being beheaded. He saw that ISIS's magazine, Dabek, called for the conquest of Italy and Rome in their magazine. And I, I'm, I, I'm sort of astonished that he ignored Pope Benedict's speech in, in Germany in 2006. And when he said Islam has a problem and needs reform to come to the age of reason. Yes, I recognize the Pope needs to recognize there are versions of Islam that are commensurate with modernity and there are versions of Islam that are not. But he can't say there's one Islam and speak of Islam as one. And I think he's just giving a nod to his allies in Saudi Arabia, Iran, etc. He doesn't right. want to offend them, but he forgets that there's no Christians there. They can't take Bibles. They can't build churches. That's a very different thing than the violence inside Italy. And it seems uh, it's hard to, I don't know how he can compare a, a, a man in you know, Italy killing his girlfriend to a priest being beheaded in France in the name of Islam. That's, to me, drawing those parallels is just not, it's a bit in, disingenuous. It really is. And again, if he wants to help those allies, truly those who believe in the equality of all before God, that want to help Catholicism and help defend the minorities within Muslim countries, he needs to recognize that it, it, there are many versions of Islam. Some versions are at war with the West and with Catholicism, mm -hmm. and some are allies, and he needs to make that distinction. Otherwise, he's actually helping what I call the Islamist mafia, which is Saudi Arabia, Iran, ISIS, and all the theocrats of the planet. All right, next one for you, Zudi. Thousands of Germans uh, protesting Angela Merkel's refugee policy, calling for her resignation. Uh, even members of her own party also going against her on this. Uh, but Zudi Merkel apparently just won't back down. Yeah, I, I really don't get it. I mean, you know, listen, I have family in Syria, and I, my heart goes out to them and to uh, uh, people as warm as uh, uh, Angela Merkel, who have opened her country. But at some point this sonic boom is, is uh, the lack of vetting, the lack of, of filtering against Islamists, against jihadists has been a great security risk and it's also been a test for their nationalism and she's abandoning German sovereignty, German nationalism and I would think people from both parties and all of the political factions are going to uh, repel from what she's doing because she's surrendering German sovereignty to sort of this influx of foreign cultural ideas and if people are going to come in they need to adopt to what it means to be German, just as it is in America or France or Belgium or anywhere. And she seems to just sort of be throwing her hands up, and I just don't get it. All right. Well, we'll see what happens, uh, but we're obviously following that closely. Uh, Zudi Jassa, as always, thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate it.